Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another worship experience with New Mount Calvary. We want to thank you all for joining us once again for the Calvary Land experience. And so if you haven't already, we want you to like and share right now. So Paul, stop what you're doing and hit that share button. So at this moment, what I would like to do is share with you all some events that we have coming up at New Mount Calvary. So on October the 3rd at 5 p.m., we will be having our second Park and praise. So if you missed the first one, you missed an experience. But don't worry, you can catch the second one. On October the 3rd at 5 p.m., we will have our second park and praise right on the campus of New Mount Calvary, and that is 246 College Street, right in Concord, Georgia. So go ahead and put it on your calendar and put it in your phone. And also, the whole month of October, we will bring, be bringing awareness to different um, events. So the first thing we will be doing is we will be talking about COVID-19 because we've all been a part of this pandemic and we want to actually talk about this thing. And then we will talk about breast cancer awareness. We will also talk about autism and then we will also talk about domestic violence. But let's not forget, also in the month of October, it is Pastor Appreciation Month. Now, I don't know about y'all's pastor, but I know our pastor has been going above and beyond to keep us in the know, to keep us fed the word. And so we are going to make sure we show our pastor that we appreciate him. And we hope you will do the same for your pastor. So at this time, please mark your calendars, put it in your phone, because we would love for you all to join us in the month of October. And please follow us. You'll see at the bottom different ways to follow New Mount Calvary and see what we have going on. If you haven't already joined our text club, please text NMC to 72727. And please continue to sow into the ministry if your heart leads you to do that. And you will see the ways to do that as well. But once again, we thank you. We appreciate you. And at this time, we'll have praise and worship. Have a great day. Good morning, New Mount Calvary. We are so grateful this morning. Anybody grateful that he woke us up this morning and started us on our way? We thank you, God. We want to start right now with a moment of prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your strength and everlasting joy. We repent right now of everything that we've said and done that was not pleasing to you. And we ask for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. We ask that you have your way in this service on today. Move like you want to move. Heal and deliver those that are in their homes, Father. We thank you for your delivering power. And we thank you for keeping us right now in the midst of this storm. And we thank you for your precious love in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody came to worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Anybody came to bless the name of the Lord? Wherever you are, hallelujah. In your living room, wherever you are, come on, stand up and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Put your hands
anybody excited about this wonderful yes. God? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, you are so good. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. It's not in a word to express how good you are, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. We bless your name, oh God. Yes, yes, yes. We give you glory.
that you made. Yes, so many times that yes, you heal me. Yes. You've been bad and good to me. Yes, You've been yes, so good. Yes, You've been yes, so good. Yes, You've been yes, so your problem and say you Good morning, good morning, New Mount Calvary and virtual friends and family. We thank you for tuning in with us another Sunday morning. God has been great to us. God has been amazing. And if you will, put your left and your right hands together for the Lord this morning. We're certainly glad for all that God is doing in our lives. We appreciate you so much for tuning in with us on last week. What an amazing, what an amazing service we had last week. If you didn't get a chance to see it, I want you to go back and um, tune in to that worship experience on last week with the praise and the hymns and the prayers. And we're so grateful for where God has brought us from and where God is taking us to. And so we thank God for each and every one of you. I wanted to be able to continue um, our Bible series. Um, it's about to go down. Uh, we've been traveling through the book of Joshua, and with his experience with Joshua, we've been talking about a number of things, and we're leading up to it's about to go down, and so continue to tune in with us because on October the 3rd at our next park and praise service, we're going to deal with those walls of Jericho coming down so it's about to go down not only through the text but it's about to go down at new mount Calvary on october the 3rd at five o'clock p.m listen if you have your bible we want you to turn to the book of joshua meet me at the book of joshua the book of joshua the fourth chapter is where we will pick up on today that's joshua 4 
and uh, we're going to be beginning at the first verse. Thank God for uh, New Mount Calvary family. We continue to pray for those who um, has been affected by and impacted by the COVID-19 um, by way of if you've you've been sick by it or if you have a family member that's been sick, if you have someone that passed away from um, this virus, we're still praying. We're still praying for families. We're praying for those. Uh, we have, um, with my administration team and, and my wife, I have three um, nurses and we have medical, other medical people in our church that are having to work in uh, this COVID-19 era. And so we want to continue to pray for them um, as they are going to work. And, and we want to also encourage you to, that it's maskatory. Stay masked up. Please continue to be masked up. Listen, are you at Joshua 4? I'm only going to keep you about two and a half hours, and then we'll let you go. Joshua chapter 4, beginning at the first verse. Joshua 4, beginning at the first verse. And it reads, and I'm reading um, from the Christian Standard Bible. After the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord spoke to Joshua, choose 12 men from the people, one man for each tribe, and command them, take 12 stones from this place in the middle of the Jordan, where the priests are standing, carrying them with you, and set them down at the place where you spend the night. So Joshua summoned the 12 men he had selected from the Israelites, one man for each tribe, and said to them, Go across to the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. For each of you lift a stone unto his shoulder, one for each of the Israelite tribes, so that this will be a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean to you? You should tell them the water of the Jordan was cut off in front of the ark of the Lord's covenant. And when it crossed the Jordan, the Jordan's water was cut off. Therefore, these stones will always be a memorial for the Israelites. The eighth verse reads, the Israelites did just as Joshua had commanded them. The 12 men took stones from the middle of the Jordan, one for each of the Israelite tribes, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the camp and set them down there. Joshua also set up 12 stones in the middle of the Jordan, where the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant were standing, and the stones are still there today. Brothers and sisters, for just a few preaching minutes, if you pray with me, uh, we can get there. I want to talk about this morning, um, as we continue this series, it's about to go down. I want to talk about this morning on the other side of through. On the other side of through. My brothers and sisters, there is a hymn that so many of us have sung over the years. There's a hymn uh, that we've sung even in the civil rights movement. There's a hymn. There's a hymn we sung as September 9-11 took place. It's a hymn. It's a hymn we have sung over the years throughout even uh, the Civil War. There was a hymn that both sides of the war, the battle song, has been a hymn that's been ringing and echoing throughout um, this country, throughout this world for a very long time. And that hymn is probably one of the most popular songs that we still know to this day. And that song gives Amazing Grace. That song, Amazing Grace, that was penned by one by the name of John Newton back in 1772 when John penned this. John, as the historians tells us, as most of we know, John, a slave trader. John, Mr. Newton, was a slave trader that one day, as he's out on the ship, a storm approaches, and the ship begins to sink. The 
ship, as he battles this storm, it's noted that John starts to pray. My brothers and sisters, as I stop there, I want to talk to you and just encourage you that when you are going through a storm, it's always in place to stop and pray. John, as he goes through this storm, there are historians that believe that when John was tossed over, he's tossed over in the waves, he's tossed over into this horrific storm. And as John is tossed over in order to save John, it's been told that they shot a spear out in the water. They shoot the spear out in the water and it goes through his leg. And as it goes through his leg, they pull the spear back in and that's how they save Mr. Newton from the storm, from drowning in the waves. Oh, brothers and sisters, one by the name of Whitley Phipps, who is a uh, great song writer, a great singer, psalmist, believes that when the uh, slaves would sing on these ships, he believed that when the slaves would sing on these ships, when they were hung, they would hum and they would have such a melody. And it's believed that John Newton on one of these ships heard a melody and he penned these words, Amazing Grace, to the melody of some slaves. My brothers and sisters, I still believe today that no matter what side you're on, when God has saved you, when you have prayed and God has brought you out of a storm, I believe no matter if we're white or black, no matter what your political affiliation is, I still believe that God can bring us together and make some harmony. Oh, but my brothers and sisters, as we talk about going on the other side of through, isn't it something that for the remainder of John's life, he was always able to look down at his leg and to remember where God had blessed him? Oh, that should be your place to shout this morning because your place may not be a hole in your leg. Your place may be that God healed you. Your place may be that God brought you out of a long, amen, issue with some relationship. Your place of remembering how good God has been could be that God delivered your children. Your place to shout this morning could be that God saved your life. It could be that before you ended up in burning hell, God saved you it could be your place to shout this morning could be the simple fact that God brought you from a mighty long way if that be you this morning I dare you to put those hands together and give God praises because God allowed you to still see where he blessed you it was a psalmist that said it like this it was good that I was afflicted because when I was afflicted when God allowed me to have pain that's when I paid more attention to God's word and we be true and honest with ourselves this morning when we were in trouble it strengthened our prayer life when we was in trouble we focused more spiritually when we was going through more we read the word of God could it be that God sometime allow us to go through things so he can keep us close to who he is Oh, brothers and sisters, as you go through life's journey, you understand that on the other side of through, we've been looking at the life of Joshua. Let me bring you back up to speed. Let me get through through a couple of these chapters because we understand that the Israelites are in a pivotal moment, a man of their history and their, their legacy of his Israelites, their, their understanding that for 450 years, the Israelites were in captivity. They was in bondage, amen. And we understand that as the Israelites, amen, there was one that came up, amen, through the Israelites by the one of name Moses. And Moses led the Israelites, watch this, he led them across the Red Sea you know amen the story he leads them across the Red Sea and as he leads them across the Red Sea we find in the text amen amen in the word of God that they end up amen watch this for four years wandering in the wilderness they did not have to wander for 40 years but the only reason they had to wander longer than they were supposed to be out there was because of their disobedience oh my brothers and sisters on your way 
amen, to discovering that the walls are going to come down in your life, that it's about to go down, that God is going to bless you. You'll discover that sometimes you're staying in situations that you're not supposed to be in that longer because of your disobedience. Sometimes you're still in a financial situation because of your disobedience. Could it be that God has said, listen, I had intentions, I had plans, I had a purpose for your life, but you stayed in disobedience, so I allowed you to wonder. Ask yourself this morning, how long will I stick in wandering in the wilderness and when God has something for me? Because we have to understand it's the obedience of the believer that God is searching for. Watch this. So Joshua, now, one thing I like about Joshua, he understood the importance, amen, of staying under great leadership. It may be for somebody out there the reason why we're stuck in certain places and we're not getting to where God has us to be is because we don't know how to stay under leadership. He stayed under the leadership of Moses. And when Moses died, the Bible tells us that God gave the, the baton, he handed it over to Joshua. Moses' job was to take them over the Red Sea and Joshua now has a job to take them over the Jordan River. But here it is, the Israelites for 450 years, they was in captivity for 40 years, they're in a man, the wilderness wandering. So for almost 500 years, they're going through something just to get to their promised land. Okay, so what's the point of me shouting this morning, Pastor? You may have to go through some stuff sometimes, a, a little longer than you want to, but just know that God is still going to get you to your promised land. It may look like uh, that it's going to last always, but just know something, trouble don't last always. When God is in the middle of it, you got to understand he's still going to get you to your promised land. Uh, you ought to be glad this morning that says, yes, I've been through some things, but I believe that God still has a promise on my life. Yes, I've been through sickness, but I believe that God still has a promise on my life. Yes, finances got bad, but I believe that God still has a promise on my life. You ought to give God praises this morning that even though it's been hard, it's been rough, it's been challenging, God has still been with you. Oh, brothers and sisters, we understood that in chapter 1, Joshua, as he's now giving a new assignment, God tells him to be courageous and to keep keep on moving and as he's courageous we understand that when we get to chapter 2 Joshua he sends a man some spies to go and find out what's going on a man in the land and when the spies get there they're given some assistance by a prostitute by the name of Rahab we discover in chapter 2 of Joshua that if God can use a prostitute if God can use someone that a man that was looked down upon by society then why is it that we cannot believe that God can use us too? Now, don't look at the prostitute funny because that was her situation. Because we all got something that God has to give us some amazing grace for. We all have something that we need God's mercy for. And we find in chapter 3 that here it is. They're preparing to go across the Jordan River. We find that they're sitting, amen, at the bank and they're resting because they understood for three days as they rested they're about to go over a river headed into their promised land so now we find ourselves in the text in chapter 4 in chapter 4 we understand now that we discovered in the, the latter part of chapter 3 that he gives them some instructions and he has the Ark of the Covenant. We told you that the Ark of the Covenant is a representation of God's presence. And so here it is. He tells the priest go out into the middle of the Jordan River. During this particular season, amen, the banks are running over so the water is moving and rushing and they step over into the water. And as they step over into the water, I can see the priest with their priest lean. And they walk in with the covenant because they had to have a lean and a great walk with them because why not walk like I got victory when the presence of the Lord is with me? Could you see him out in the river? A man walking, a man with victory. Because they understood that when we walk into the middle, God is getting in the situation with us. Somebody ought to be shouting this morning because you understand that no matter what's going on, when you
you put God in the middle of it, uh, he's going to make everything go right. Try him out this morning. Uh, no matter what your relationships look like, put God in the middle. Uh, no matter what your health look like, why don't you just try putting God in the middle? Because when they put God in the middle of the Jordan, the Bible tells us that the water ceased. Or oh, could it be, brothers and sisters, the reason why some things are going on in your life, so much turbulence, is because you don't have God in the middle. <laughs> You got friends in the middle, but you don't remove God. Amen. You got associates in the middle, but you remove God. God says, I need you to put me back in the middle and watch what I can do in your life. He tells them, watch this. And the third chapter and the latter parts, the priest have come to the water and the water has ceased and they're starting to move across the river. Oh, Brothers and sisters, I like what the text tells me in the fourth chapter. In the fourth chapter, the first verse, it says, the entire nation had finished crossing the Jordan. Ain't it good to know that God didn't leave nobody behind? Although, amen, God didn't leave nobody behind, the text doesn't tell us that anybody was trying to go back. The text does not tell us, amen, that there was some that said, no, we don't want to go that way. What I'm trying to suggest to you sometimes is it's not that God doesn't have something for you, but are you at least willing to head in the direction that God will have you to be? There are some things that you got to learn. Yes, God is a God that's everywhere. Yes, God is all-knowing. Yes, God is powerful. But there are some things that we got to do on our own. He stopped the water, but they at least had to walk. Can I talk to some people this morning? Amen. Man, you can't be that lazy. Yes, God stopped the water. He allowed them to walk through the river, amen, across the bank. But you got to get to a place in your life where you understand, amen, that yes, God is a way maker. Yes, he's miraculous. Yes, he can do all things. But there's some stuff that you got to do yourself. And so we understand that now as they come across through the Jordan, the Bible tells us that God tells them, choose 12 men from each tribe, one man from each tribe, 12 men. I need you to get these men, and I need these men to grab some stones. I want them to take the stones. Amen. I want them to take the stones from the middle from where the priests are standing and carry them with them to the place they're going to spend the night. Now, here, here, here's the issue, amen, that I kind of had when I first read the text because I said, now, if God would have said some pebbles, probably would have made sense to me. God, you wanted them to carry some stones. Now, theologians believe, historians believe that these stones were about 100 pounds. About 100 pounds of stone, and it tells them that they put it on their shoulder. They put a 100 pound, amen, stone on their shoulder and walked to the place that they was going to spend the night, the place in Gilgal, and watch this. So this place was about a mile or two away from them. So they walked about a mile or two with a hundred pound stone on their shoulder. Oh, my brothers and sisters, the purpose of the stone, amen, was to place a memorial so that we can remember what God has done. But I said, well, why did the stones have to be so heavy? God told me to tell you this morning because you have to understand that what I've done for you, you're going to definitely remember it. I know it hurt, but God says it was heavy, but you're never going to forget how I blessed you. I know you're trying to figure out God why me. God said it was heavy, but guess what? Your hallelujah got greater. God sent me to tell somebody, yes, it got heavy in your life. He said, but you started to praise me more. God said, yes, I know it got heavy, but you started started giving more. God said, yes, I know it got heavy, but there'll be some people this morning that say, yes, sometimes the trouble got heavy in my life, but I started shouting more. I started praising more. I started giving him more glory. You ought to just wave your hand right there in your house and say, God, thank you for the heavy stuff in my life. They had to carry whoa, some shoulder on their shoulders, some heavy stones. Could you see them? I, I, I could see them. They were walking and they had them stones on the shoulder. I could hear one brother saying, man, these stones are heavy. Oh, but as he thought about, hey man, how heavy the stones was. I could hear another brother saying, yep, yeah, but thank be to God. 
we're not back where we used to be. Oh, can I help y'all out? Sometimes you can't appreciate what God is doing in your life because you're too pain, you're too busy complaining about what he didn't do. Sometimes we forget to give God glory for what he's already done and you're complaining about what he didn't do. God is saying to some people this morning, can you still thank me even when I haven't given you everything you wanted? Can you still thank me and give me glory even when everything ain't going your way? Listen, on the other side of through, you got to learn how to give God our praises and quit complaining about what God has not done and learn how to give him glory for what he's already done. Somebody shout thank you God for what you've already done. Oh brothers and sisters my time is starting to get short. Amen. But I want to just tell you a couple more things. Amen. Give me about three more hours and I'll be out your way. So here it is in the text. We find Joshua and he tells the 12 men get the stones and pick them up. I like what Joshua does. He summoned the 12 men that he selected from the Israelites. Go across to the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Man, it, ain't it something that God shows up in the middle? It says go in the middle of Jordan. Each of you lift a stone, put it on your shoulder, one for each of the Israelite tribes. So this will be a sign among you in the future. Watch this. When your children ask you, uh, what do these stones mean to you? Can I ask you a question? What does all the blessings God have done for you mean to you? What, what, what does it mean to you that God healed your body? What, what does it mean to you that he made ways out of no ways? What, what does it mean to you that God brought you over your Jordan River? What does it mean to you that God saved your soul? What does it mean to you that God saved your children? What does it mean to you that he took care of your knees? What does it mean to you that he washed over you all night long? What does it mean to you that he woke you up early this morning? I wish I had me some elder saints that says he looked all a man beyond my faults and he saw all of my knees. What does God mean to you? Say, what does these stones mean to you? And when it be something, my brothers and sisters, God says, watch this, amen. So when their children ask, my brothers, I was, I was, I was real, real um, jaded today by a text message that I got. My cousin sent to the family chat. My cousin sent us, amen, a text, amen, about some 11-year-old girls, amen, who on a video, amen, in front of other adults are gyrating and on the floor and they are, amen, they're mimicking a, some rap uh, video or something that they've seen. 11 year old girls, amen. Now, the problem I have is not so much with the girls. The problem I have is who are they parents? Now, here it is because God says when your children ask you what are these stones for, God is suggesting you need to tell them about who I am. My brothers and sisters, I got to talk to some parents. What is it that you're telling your children about God in 2020? What is it, even though there's no youth ministry open right now, some, amen, what are you telling your children about God? Amen. Brothers and sisters, you still have a responsibility. Amen. That on the other side of through, it ain't just enough to give God praises. You got to also be able to tell your children and your children's children about who God is. Can I tell you? Yes, I know you think you the new 40 and you the new 45, but you still got to tell your children about who God is. Yes, I know you don't even call yourself grandmama no more. Now we grandmas and g-moms and all these new moms. That's good, but you got to still tell your child, amen, about the name of Jesus. I know you. Yes, yes, you think you got it going on, brother. You talking about, man, I'm 50. I'm the new 50. Amen. No matter how new of a 50 is, you got to still tell them, amen, that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Parents, don't forget to tell our children. Woo who God is. There ought to be some parents out there that can type amen at the top or the bottom of the screen and say, Pastor, you write about it because my children, amen, are going to know who God is. There ought to be somebody that can say this morning, as for me and my house, yes, we are going to serve the Lord. And so my brothers and sisters, Joshua, the 12 men have their heavy 12 stones that is significant about where God has brought them from. Here it is. Amen. We understand that in the text, 
It says, why and what do these stones mean to you? You should tell them the water of the Jordan was cut off in front of the ark of the Lord. It was cut off in front of the, the Lord. The, the water was cut off. Therefore, these stones will always be memorial for the Israelites. The Israelites did just as Joshua had commanded them. The 12 men took stones from the middle of Jordan, one for each of the Israelites, just as the Lord had told Joshua. They carried them to the camp and set them down there. Joshua, watch this. This is what, what made me happy, Bishop of Videography. Jo jo Joshua said, I'm going to lead by example, e even though we don't came from a long way. Uh, Joshua says, I I'm not just going to let y'all carry some stones. Uh, Joshua said, I'm going to build a, uh, I'm going to build a man a memorial too. I wish I could talk to some leaders out there. <laughs> There's so many people, a man that want the titles, but you don't want to have to serve first. There's a lot of people, a man, you think you want to be in all of these high places, uh, but you got to learn how to be low first. Joshua understood uh, a man because he served a man, his, his great leader, Moses. Is there somebody I'm talking to this morning understand uh, if you want to get to some high places uh, you got to learn how to serve in some low places Joshua said man if y'all gonna carry some stones uh, I can carry a stone too I want to tell some people uh, as you get ready to vote uh, I'm not gonna tell you to vote for uh, but you need to vote for a president uh, that's not cared, worried about uh, how heavy the stones are uh, but he's willing to carry some stones and she or she is willing to carry some stones some stones in this particular season of what we're going through. I won't tell you who I'm voting for, but whoever I vote for, you best believe that they're not afraid to go get in the middle of the Jordan because whoever I vote for won't be afraid to have the presence of the Lord with them. Oh, brothers and sisters, somebody need to understand that there is joy on the other side of through. Woo. And so, my brothers, I got to get ready to leave you. It's getting kind of good. Oh, somebody type is getting hot in here. Listen, so because a man as Joshua, what I like about the text, Joshua builds his memorial in the middle of the joy. The other men are commanded to go and build where they're going to spend the night. Made sense to me, perfect sense, because it says, remind your children when they ask about these memorials, what does it mean? Made sense to me, Bishop of Videography, because here it is, they have it built over here, and it's somewhere you can see it. It makes sense to me to build it, amen, in the middle of Jordan, because the text tells us, watch this, that after the priest had walked out of the Jordan, and when once the last priest's foot came out of the Jordan and onto the land, the text tells us that the water came back rushing. Okay, so I'm trying to understand, Joshua, why would you build, amen, your memorial when you knew the water was going to cover it up? All right, I'm going to help y'all, and I promise I'm going to be out y'all way. That'll be somebody says on the other side of through. Joshua told me to tell you because I wasn't worried about who seen my memorial. God knows what I do. That'll be somebody that's looking at this morning and say, everybody don't need to know what I do as long as God sees what I do. I said, Joshua. Well, man ain't nobody gonna see your stones uh, he said but God sees my stones uh, and on the other side of through I want to talk to some people this morning uh, you don't have to Facebook it you don't have to IG it you don't have to send a text message uh, but as long as God knows and sees your heart uh, and God knows what you can do uh, and what you've done that'll be somebody and say uh, I got some more stones to give God this morning uh, because he's been just that good to me uh, is there about five ten 15 of you this morning that can talk back to pastor and say I got more stones to give him because he brought me a mighty long way I got more stones to give God because he saved my soul I don't need for everybody to know what I've done for God but as long as God knows woo, I'm happy about what God has done in my life because you got to get to a point, listen, everybody don't have to see what you do for folk. Everybody don't have to see what you're doing. Because as long as God knows, watch this, he said, I don't have to let everybody know. God, listen, you know I put the memorial there. You see it. Can I talk to somebody this morning? What is it that you trying to put so much focus on so people can think highly of you? And they're not seeing the God in you 
on the other side of through because the text says that the Lord crossed them all over. About 40,000 equipped for war crossed to the plains of Jericho in the Lord's presence. My brother and sisters, I'm out of time. We'll, we'll catch back up on next week. Next week we're going to deal, we're going to go into and, and, and chapter 5 when, when they circumcised these new soldiers. I want you to start reading in chapter 5. Chapter 5, amen, verse 8 is what we'll be dealing with next week. It says, after the entire nation had been circumcised, they stayed where they were in the camp until they recovered. <laughs> next week we're going to deal with that. But, but listen, on the other side of through, understand Watch this. The people hurried across Jordan. The text tells us in the 10th, 10th verse that they hurried across. Could you, could you see how happy they was? Because I, I believe that they were happy because of how much they had been through. How much their grandparents had been through how much their uncles and aunties had been through trying to get them to the promised land. Can I talk to you? Listen, you have to have a certain respect because for the most of us, the majority of us, you've made it through what you made it through because somebody opened some doors for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, big mom and them was praying. Big mom and them sacrificed a lot for you. Your grandparents and elders sacrificed a lot for us. And how dare us get on the other side of through and forget what God has done for us. Look at the text and then I'm done. Look. If you look at the 24th verse, it said, This is also for the people of the earth may know that the Lord's hand is mighty. So that you may always fear the Lord your God. Everything that God is doing is for him to get glory. Everything that God, he, he's saying, watch how powerful I am. I'm going to use your life for that. Watch how powerful I am. I'm going to use your testimony for that. He says that his hand is mighty. You, you got to remind your kids how mighty his hand is. How, 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 how mighty his hand is? Uh, uh, when I didn't have a dime, God still fed us. How mighty is his hand? When, 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 when I didn't know how to make it and the lights went out, somehow God, amen, made it to where we can get our power cut on. How, how mighty is his hand? You, you got to be able to have that conversation with your children and let them know that you always, you didn't always call it a face towel or, amen, or a washcloth. That was a point in your life when you just referred to it as a rag. But, you know, when you got a little bit more edumacation, I wish I talked to some real people, you got to let them know how powerful God's hand is because he brought you from a mighty long way. God bless you this morning. Listen. Whew. Listen. I want you to be able to, for the person who says, I, I want to know who this man is. I want you to be able to repeat after me with a sincere heart. Lord, forgive me, a sinner. Lord, forgive me. I repent. God, I, 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 I need your mercy this morning. Lord, I believe that you are the son of the living God. I believe that you you died on that rugged cross. I believe that you, you rose on the third day. God, save my soul. If that be you this morning, I want you to email us at info at calvaryland.org at the bottom of the screen. I want you to email us with your contact information. If you want to be a part of this ministry, email us. We want to be able to contact you. We would love to be able to allow um, our our minister here to grow you into the place that God will have you to be. Now to the person who says, I'm saved, but I, I, I don't feel like I, I, I've been doing everything right. And I, I just want you to say, Lord, have mercy on me and restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Listen, listen, I, I had to cut across the field. It was getting good. But listen, on the other side of through, I want you to understand 
amen, that God is going to be able to use your life and use what you've been through to show how mighty his hand is. Thank you for being committed with your giving. Because of your giving, we have been able to continue to do ministry. And so if you see the different ways to give at the bottom of the screen, you also can text um, give NMC to 72727 um, and for different giving options. I'm so grateful. Thank you for uh, Minister Larea and Voices of Calvary and our musicians. And so we're grateful. Thank you for our, our administration team that continues to work throughout the week. We thank God for our administration team because our administration team, uh, most of them have full-time jobs. And they still, amen, they still work hard to continue to keep, amen, ministry going at excellence. Listen, I want to tell you this. Ministry cannot be done with just the pastor. Ministry is done well when you have a great team. So I thank God for our team. Thank God for our members. Thank God for all of you that wor worship with us virtually. And listen, just remember that there are blessings on the other side of through. And some of these things that we talked about this morning, I hope that it blessed your soul. Listen, I look forward to seeing you um, at our events coming up. And thank God for um, the different news and the bulletins that you all got and you received. Listen, I want you to be able to stay in prayer. Please stay in prayer. Please stay in prayer for your families. Please stay in prayer during this COVID-19 season. Please stay in prayer during this election season. Please stay in prayer for each other. Please stay in prayer for your neighbors. Please stay in prayer. Stay in prayer. Amen. Because God is going to show how mighty his hand is. Amen. Listen, as we leave, amen, in our new Mount Calvary fashion, for if it had not been for the Lord on our side, tell me where would I be. God bless you. Peace. Come on, put your hands together as we get ready to leave today. I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope God blessed you. I want you to put your hands together and dance a little bit with me. Come on, to the left. To the right, come on, hey, to the left, to the right, come on, take it back, to the, uh, come on, take it back, come on, to the left, <laughs> listen, if it had, can I be for the Lord on my side, tell me Hey, hey, where would I be? Where would you be? Where would I be if it had, had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where.